Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Luke. This morning we're in the 14th chapter. We'll read the first verse and then continue with verses 7 through 14. So let us attend to God's word for us on this Lord's Day. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you please pray with me? Holy Spirit, fill this place that as your word is proclaimed, we may sense your presence. Fill my words that they might become your words. And fill our ears and our hearts that all that is not from you might be filtered out and discarded, but what is from you might take deep root and bear fruit. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So sometimes when I read the things that Jesus says, they make sense, you know? They just make good sense. And then sometimes I read things that Jesus said and they seem to make no sense at all. This passage today, it kind of has both those. You know, the things that Jesus says at first about when someone invites you to a wedding feast and sitting in the lowest place, I mean, this just makes good sense. This is good advice. This is good advice for everyone. Okay? That you don't want to humiliate yourself by, by trying to grab more than you ought to. He says, you know, if you go to a wedding feast, don't sit up in the most prominent place in case somebody more prominent comes and you have to be, you know, sent down to the kids' table. He says, no, say, take the lowest place. And then your, your host may see you and say, oh, no, you shouldn't sit here. Come, sit in this better spot. It just makes good sense not to put ourselves in, in a place where we're going to embarrass ourselves. I have to say, I kind of learned this early on. Um, as a kid, I was kind of a smart aleck. Um, I may still be, I'm not sure, but, but I certainly was as a kid. Okay? And I had uh, a, a temptation in class to make sure that people knew that I knew. Right? So if a question was asked, I was quick to jump in and, and, and answer it. Okay? Or if, if a question wasn't asked, I may have been tempted to just jump in and add to things anyway, right? Until I was called out on it. Until I, I stood up and said, or, or raised my hand and said something that was just plain wrong, because I thought I knew, but I didn't, or I thought I could fake it. Right? And the embarrassment of that early on has stayed with me. And I've tried really hard, with more or less success, okay, not to be a know-it-all, right? to listen instead of speak. 
It took being embarrassed to do that. Sometimes we need to be put in our place. I was reading about a, uh, an executive who, uh, an executive consultant, Richard Hagberg, and he tells the story of a, a head of a large company who recently had shared with him an incident that happened at the, uh, at the driver's license bureau. Right? They were in there and they were, they were waiting uh, for him to renew his license. You know what that's like. You're sitting there with that stupid piece of paper that says 98 on it and the number on the board says 63. Right? <laughs> and you're waiting and waiting and you just need something that's going to take two minutes. And somebody else is going back and forth about their, you know, commercial driver's license or something, and, and you just start getting anxious. Well, this, this man, he was doing that. He was frustrated at how long it was taking. And so he grumbles to his wife. He says, don't they know who I am? And she looked at him and said, yeah, you're a plumber's son who got lucky. Right? Sometimes we need people to put us in our place whether it's a stranger or a loved one. And we need to learn the importance of humility so that we're not embarrassed because that just, it doesn't help you get along in the world. That all makes sense, doesn't it? But then Jesus goes on and, and adds to it. And he says to his host, well, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives, your rich neighbors, because they might pay you back. I'm sorry, Jesus, that doesn't make sense. That's not the way the world works. We all know we live in a world where you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Where we want to cultivate relationships with people who can help us. We want people who are, are able to support the things we're, we're interested in and have, have the ability to do something about it. You know, I'm reading this, this uh, passage this week and thinking about, you know, those, those fundraising banquets that tend to happen in the summer out here in Harbor Springs. Right? And you go to some really nice dinner and they have a silent auction and then they have a, a regular auction and they, they bring in all this money for this cause. Yeah. Imagine if what they did was they went out and they, they invited people who could barely pay their rent people who were, were ill and behind in medical bills, people who, who had just not had a, a financially successful life. Imagine if those were the people at the fundraising banquet. It's like, Jesus, that doesn't make any sense. What is it you're talking about? But I wonder if Jesus is less talking to the guests at this dinner he was at or to that host per se about what they should do and was instead describing himself. You see, Jesus is that guest who comes in humbly and sits at the lowest place. I mean, here is God, the Son of God, the one who for all eternity has been there at the right hand of God the Father, the one through whom everything was made. And he comes down to join us, comes to our party, not with pomp and circumstance, not into a position of, of power and prestige and wealth, but he's born in a manger. He's a poor carpenter's son, his family can't even afford a good sacrifice for his dedication and have to settle for, for two pigeons. It was the reading that, that you heard preached on last week, okay, that he humbled himself in coming to us until God the Father raised him up raised him up first on a cross and then to the right hand of the Most High. Yeah. Jesus was that, that perfect guest he describes in that story. 
but he's also the perfect host he describes in the second part. See, Jesus is the one who invites those who can't repay him to his feast. Often the, the culmination of the kingdom of God, the, the description of heaven that is used in scripture is of a, a banquet, of a wedding feast. And Jesus is the groom. Jesus is the host. And he doesn't go out and invite those who can do something for him. He doesn't invite those who can pay him back. He invites you. He invites me. Because we have nothing to offer. He invites the broken, the depressed, the adulterer, the alcoholic, the philanderer. He invites the, the person who cheats on their taxes, the person who has shaken hands on a shady business deal. the ones who have, have failed to do the things that he has made us to do. He says, come. Come to my feast and sit with me and dine. You know, I had an experience kind of like the one he describes here one time at a wedding, at a wedding feast. We had a, uh, one of my first graduate students was a, a young woman named Susan, a bright, bright gal, uh, and she you know, was doing great work and, and also fell in love and was getting married. And she'd only been in my lab a couple of years. I, mean, I knew her reasonably well, didn't know her fiancé at all, had never met her family. And she invites us to go to the wedding. And we were, we were touched, we were honored at that. Right? And so we, we did, we drove uh, up to, I'm trying to remember where it was, uh, Mason City or something. Anyway, it was a, it was a bit of a stretch. Uh, but we, we get there and hardly anybody we know, one or two other graduate students from the department. And, uh, so at the, at the reception we go and we sit with them and Susan comes up and says to me, no, I want you to come sit up front with my folks. And I was floored. Yeah. It, was just, it was such a, a privilege to have, you know, to have this student care enough to say, you know, really, I want you to come up, be with my folks, be with my family. Um, I don't know that any of the other guests gave a hoot, but, um, <laughs> but I was honored. Yeah. It's that, that sense of being lifted up, of being invited in that Jesus offers us. These stories make much more sense when we think about them as applying to Jesus. But the thing is, as his followers, we're supposed to imitate him. As disciples of Christ, we are called to live like him, to be like him, to witness to him with our lives. And that means we also are supposed to be the kind of guests who don't put ourselves forward, who don't seek to blow our own horn. That we are to more and more and more humble ourselves. And if anybody is to, is to lift us up, let it be God. Let someone else say if there's anything good about us, if there's anything valuable in us, let them do it. But we're called to be humble. And as hosts, we may not, I mean, some of you do give really nice dinner parties, um, but it's not dinner parties that Jesus is really talking about. What friendships do we cultivate? Who do we interact with? 
How do we put ourselves out there? Are we looking to make connections with people who can help us out? Or are we just there to serve, to be poured out for others? That's the kind of host we are to be, to, to do for others with no thought of what they might do for us, with no thought of a return. And that's hard. That goes against the grain. Author Henry Nowen, whom some of you may know, in one of his books, he talks about the Christian life as a life of downward mobility. That we are to seek more and more and more to be less and less and less so that we are all Christ. And he talks about the difficulty in that. He says, everything in me wants to move upward. Downward mobility with Jesus goes radically against my inclinations, against the advice of the world surrounding me, and against the culture of which I am a part. And yet, that is the life that Jesus demonstrated for us and that he calls us to as his servants. This week, we are, are beginning on our stewardship season and thinking about what it means to give. And I think that the humility that Jesus talks about and demonstrates here is what it's about. Okay. So often, our tendency is to give to something that is going to help us out, be an investment in one way or another. So often, if nothing else, we give so that we feel good about ourselves. But Jesus says we give of ourselves in order to give of ourselves not expecting anything in return. What would it look like if we held on to our time, to our talent, to our finances, that loosely? Saying, okay, God, where, where do you want me to just scatter what you've given me? How can I humble myself in how I give of myself? And how can I do it with no thought of return? And it's hard. In fact, I don't think it's humanly possible. Okay. And yet it's what we're called to. And so we pray. We ask for God's spirit to work in us and through us. And we continue bit by bit in this journey of downward mobility. Because when we, when we continue to the bottom, <laughs> we find that we're at the top. Because those who humble themselves are exalted, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.